All right, in the next section of code, we're gonna generate a HTML file, or sorry, a KML file for Google Earth. And this is gonna allow us to visualize our data in 3D. So we're gonna be able to see our path plotted over three-dimensional Earth, which in this case will be very cool because this data that we're using for this example is a high altitude balloon flight. So we'll really be able to see the elevation change over the course of the flight. So we're gonna start out by copying a file called googleearthheader.txt and I'll show you what that looks like. This is the format that KML, KML files will use and we split this into a different text file so that we didn't have to code these strings into MATLAB itself. So what MATLAB will do is it'll copy this file that I just showed you called googleearthheader.txt and it's going to copy it into a different file called matlab3dmatfile.kml. So as soon as it does that, that file is now called, it now has the KML extension. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna take what was already written in this file and we're going to append it. We're gonna add on to it. So now that we've copied that file over and now named it as a KML file, we're going to open it in MATLAB and this A character just says we're gonna append that file. So now we have that file ID for our Google Earth file. And we're now we're going to write our Google, or sorry, Earth map data, the one that we generated in the above section that has this data in it. It's latitude, longitude, and altitude. And we're gonna write it to that file using DLM write. And again, we're appending onto matlab 3 dmatfilekml Now we also have to put in a few more strings in there, even though we, most of the text that we have is already in that KML file, we do have to put a few more in. So I made seven different variables with seven different strings that we're gonna be using. Uh, this is kind of a clumsy way to do it. There are definitely quicker and more efficient ways to write these strings to that KML file. I just did it this way so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. So now we're going to print that data from Earth map data into that file, which has the file ID earth right here. So we're gonna use the function called fprintf. We have the file ID here. And then this is the data type that we're gonna be writing in. So this is basically saying we're gonna have a string and then we're gonna make a new line, then we're gonna have a string and then we're gonna make another new line, so on and so forth. And then these are the strings that we're gonna be putting in. String 1a, string 2a, and that's what we defined up here. And that just goes over. Uh, and after we print that, we're going to close the file. So I will run this section of code. And if we go to our file folder, And we'll look at the most recently modified folder, file. We'll see that we've generated a KML file called MATLAB 3D map file. And that should be our Google Earth file. Uh, at the end of this video, we will go back and once we have both our KML file and Google Earth file, we'll open both of those and see how they look. All right guys, now that we're done with Google Earth, we're gonna move on to Google Maps. We're gonna follow some of the same techniques that we did with Google Earth. Google Maps, generating Google Maps is a little bit more difficult just because of the format that they require to create that map, but it's gonna be very similar. Uh, we're gonna start by copying the file called Google Maps header.txt. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like. It's very similar to the Google Earth header, uh, except this is HTML code. And the reason that we didn't hard code this in to our MATLAB function it's, it's just more trouble than it's worth. It's much easier and much more robust for us to just read this file and append onto the end of it. And the reason we're not appending that file specifically, the reason that we're copying it over, is because we wanna be able to use 
that file later. We don't want to change it because we want to be able to use this program over and over again. So we're going to start by copying that over and renaming it matlab2dmatfile.html. So it is now an HTML file. And so the format that's required to, to input specific latitude and longitude coordinates looks like this. We're going to start appending onto that text file and we're going to say new Google Maps .lat long. And then we're going to need to stick in our latitude and then a comma and then our longitude and then a closing bracket. So I'm just defining these strings as the individual parts of each entry into that HTML file that doesn't include the numbers for latitude and longitude. And we're gonna create basically a cell array and then with each individual component and then concatenate them all together. So I'll run this section of code just to show you what it looks like. I created a new variable called Google Map Data. So it's a cell array basically that's specific for this Google Maps section. And you can see that it's a cell array that is five columns wide and it's empty. We just initialized it. We haven't done anything with it yet. So this first for loop is basically just gonna stick in that first column information that we know we're gonna need, which is that new Google Maps dot lat long string. And you can see once that for loop ran, we now have that string in that first column. Now our next job is to put in our latitude. So this next for loop will do just that. And if we go back to Google Map Data, we'll see that we now have our latitude in column number two. Next step is to put in that comma in between the latitude and longitude. And I define that up here as map middle. So let's just run that. If we go back to Google map data. We'll see that there's now a comma after the latitude. Our next loop will do the exact same thing for longitude that we already did for latitude. Now we have our longitude. All right, last but not least, we have the closing parentheses that we defined up here along with a comma. If we open Google Map Data again, there it is in column number five. So this is the format that's gonna be inputted to that HTML file. Once we concatenate each row together, each row will be one string, basically. And that's what we're gonna append onto that HTML file. So here we go. We're going to open matlab2dmapfile.html with the append command. Now we have that file ID for maps. And before we do that, there's something else cool that you can do on Google Maps is that you can add pins. This isn't necessary or this isn't required. Uh, we thought we'd show you how to do it. For our specific application, we're using a high altitude balloon flight. And there's a couple points of interest that we might wanna put a pin on. In this case, our balloon, there are certain points on the map where our balloon enters the jet stream and where it exits the jet stream. So we thought it'd be cool to mark those coordinates. First, we're going to mark the beginning and ending of our balloon flight. So we're just going to take that first degree, the first latitude and the first longitude of our vector called degrees one and degrees two, and then the last. And that just marks our beginning and ending points. And then we're, we manually put in the coordinates for where we entered and exited the jet stream so that you can see how that worked. 
and we'll put those pins in in a little bit. We have a little bit extra HTML code that we hard coded in here. It isn't long, but it is code that's necessary in order to put those pins in that we discussed above. So we have one string called in between, another one called after, another one called comma. It's very similar to the strings that we defined up here. It's just things that we're gonna concatenate onto the end of each other after putting in our number, latitude, and longitude. So we're, by using the command fprintf and the file ID that we defined above up here, it's the same format that we used earlier in the video. We're defining the type of data that we're putting in, which is a string, and then the actual strings that we're inputting. So we're gonna start by writing first coordinate one with a comma, and then first coordinate two. That's the latitude and longitude of our beginning point. And then we're gonna print the in-between string that I defined up here. That's just necessary HTML code that you have to put in in between each, in between each pin that you put on the map. Uh, our second point is where we entered the jet stream with a comma in between. And then again, you need that in-between code that's defined right here. And then our next point is where we went out of the jet stream with a comma in between. And then our in-between code. Last but not least, we have where we landed, the balloon landed, that's our last coordinate in our GPS data. Uh, same format as before. And then we have, we print this after string and that's just what is right here. That's just necessary HTML code that follows the last pin that we define. All right? So let's run this section of code. Uh, here, our last, our last loop here is just gonna write the Google map data. That's all of our GPS data that we have right here in a very specific format. So after we print that, we are going to print the footer. What I showed you before for Google Maps was the header. We decided to hard code this section because there are a few things that you can edit in each individual string that will show you. And it's just easier to edit when these are in MATLAB and not in a text file. So you can see that once we upload this to an HTML file, you'll basically be able to take that web address, put it in your browser and see what it looks like. You can put in specific information like a team number, we're just putting example code here. You can put another piece of information, call it whatever you want, event, date, whatever you want. We, we put flight path and then today's date. Uh, you can put a class, hands-on engineering, section number one, whatever you want. You can change this to say whatever you want. Um, and then we're just going to print all of this to the same file ID using fprintf. And then we're basically printing all of those stri strings on to that file. So again, this is a very clumsy way to do it in MATLAB for this section. Uh, but we'd like to do it this way right now so we can show you, show you how to do it and how it works. So, now that we're done with this section, let's run it. All right, and now we can go to our file folder for the directory that we're using right now. And now you can see that we now have a Chrome HTML document along with a KML file. So let's open each one and see what it looks like. And there we go. So you can see that we have an interactive Google Maps map that you can zoom in on, you can pan, you can change it to a map or a satellite view. And you can see that this red line is the actual GPS track. Those were all those data points with latitude and longitude. 
And then you can see we have four markers. This is the one that marked the beginning of our flight, the end of our flight, and then the two points where we entered and exited the jet stream. And down here is what we put in that HTML footer. We put a team, example code, an event, a class. You can change these to say whatever you want. And that's gonna be in that footer section in our MATLAB code. Next, let's look at our three-dimensional Google Maps file. We're gonna, oh, Google Earth file, sorry. And we'll see what that looks like. So if you click on that file, it's automatically gonna load. It's actually going to zoom directly to your plot. And there we go. So as you can see, this data is in three dimensions. You can see latitude, longitude, and altitude. And there are different settings that you can actually change in your KML code for things like plotting the line that was actually followed by our high altitude balloon. You can change the line thickness, the line color, things like that. We just kept it with defaults in our code, but you can definitely look online and see how to change it to have custom settings. So there you go. You see that we can plot our GPS data in both two-dimensional Google Maps and three-dimensional Google Earth. We're gonna show you how to do the exact same thing with Python. So continue watching and see how to do that. Thanks for watching.